what's up? I'm Michelle B. This is Channel Notes, a channel dedicated to helping you do YouTube. And in this video, I am finally going to show you how I color grade my videos. This is honestly my most highly requested video. I get requests for it all the time on my main channel, Michelle B, which I will link in the description down below. I put a really pink tone to my main videos. I've talked about it before. I feel like how you color your videos really gets across a different kind of vibe. You can totally change the feeling that you want to give your videos with just the color. So I use Final Cut Pro to do my color grading. It's really simple, really easy, and we will get right into it. So before we get into it, I'll show you the before and after from the tutorial, and then we'll deep dive into how I got this result. So this is the before, nice and warm, very warm, which is not really the tone that I go for on my main channel. And then this is the after. So this is really bright, airy, um, pink and dreamy, which is kind of the vibe that I have on my main channel. So in this tutorial, I'll show you how to reach that after. So I'm going to show you how I would color this video. The first thing I would do is go into this little magic wand that's under your image and you want to click show color board. So color board comes with Final Cut Pro. It's not an extension and it's super easy to use. If you've ever edited an Instagram photo, you will be able to use color board. So in the color tab up the top, basically you can adjust your global shadows, midtones, highlights, your global. It's the whole image. So I want to make the whole image green. I can make the whole image green. Um, then you've got your shadows. So your shadows is just any dark parts of the image and you can adjust those. Um, Mid-tones is anywhere in between your shadows and your highlights. So anything in the middle there. Um, and then your highlights is anything that's light on your image. So I guess the mirror, or oh, a lot of my image is quite light. So the next tab up the top is saturation. So you'll see a lot of people play around with saturation. So if your target audience is maybe like younger people um, and you have like bright, bubbly, fun videos, um, those kind of YouTubers would up their saturation to be really bright. So you'll notice a lot of those YouTubers have like crazy bright lips and crazy bright like green grass, stuff like that. Whereas if a YouTuber had maybe an older audience and I don't know, they were targeting like grungier, more like hipstery type people, I'm not really sure, um, they might lower the satura saturation to take away that color. And down the bottom, you just have your global, midtones, highlights, just like on your color board. So the next tab is the exposure tab. So exposure tab is exactly what it sounds like. It's basically where you can control the lightness of the image. So I could make my image a little bit lighter if it were dark. Maybe I didn't have enough artificial lighting or enough you know, actual light coming into my room if it was like a dark afternoon, um, then I would use the exposure tab. I find the exposure tab makes it like a little too faded looking, if that makes sense for me. So I usually don't touch it that much. So now I'll show you how I actually go about editing my videos so that they have that pink and dreamy kind of feel. So I start out always on the color tab. Um, the first thing I usually do is drag the shadows so that they're a little bit blue. I like my shadows blue. So for my mid-tones and my highlights, because this is only my first color board, I actually try to get everything as neutral as possible. So I'm really trying to remove the warmth in this one because it is so yellow, so orangey looking in the normal tones because of all that sunlight that was coming in. So for this color board in particular, I'm just trying to basically remove the color, get it so that it's a nice base, almost like taking like the makeup off someone and getting yourself like a nice like fresh face to start off with. This is what I'm doing here. So so really removing any of that warmness, making it a lot more neutral and just kind of boring so that then I can add the colors on top on another color board. So I don't actually have a real specific formula with, um, you know, what colors go where and what percentage. A lot of it is honestly experimentation. Like I don't really know what I'm doing half the time. I'm just dragging things around, seeing what looks mo the most neutral or the most pink and dreamy. And then I'm like, yes, okay, I've got it. So now that we've sort of removed the color, um, I would add another color board on it. So you can't use the magic wand for this. You actually have to drag the color correction on and then you'll have a second color correction board. So then you might want to adjust just your globals, whatever you want to do. So I will adjust my highlights and make them a little funner. See, that looks kind of right for some reason, but it's not really the right color, is it? 
So I find with the percentages, you literally need to keep them as minimal as possible, like from one to 5%, otherwise it's really overbearing. Like I've screwed up before and I've made myself hella pink, which is not attractive. This is what I do a lot. I go back and forth and go, mm, that's too pink. Oh, that's like not pink enough. I feel like that's like a good level. Yeah. So that's an overview of how I would use the color board, but I actually do some additional stuff to my video. I don't think it's necessary. It's just stuff that I do. So um, Pixel Film Studios is a website and they have a whole bunch of almost like filters for Instagram, but it's for your videos. They are paid, which is sort of why I didn't want to mention them first. Um, I will link them in the description down below because it's a pretty useful resource. So I have um, Final Cut Pro and it is soft, which is a filter. I actually get rid of all the softness, so I don't know why I bought this particular package. Um, so another thing that I'll do is I will do an increase to the sharpness as well. So I'll drag that onto my timeline. So the sharpen tool, I keep it at around 2.5 usually. And, and for the filter, you can choose between a whole bunch of different filters. Obviously at full strength, they look ridiculous, but you just like pull down the strength lever a little bit and they look a little bit more normal. So I think I usually go for um, a soft light pink and I would drag that down to literally like 11%. It doesn't even make a difference in the end, but it feels like it makes a difference. Oh no, I'll leave it at like 16%. You can see all the different types of filters. They have like a whole bunch and they give, give a whole different vibe to your videos. I really like all of the names of them, to be honest. Um, tangerine, doesn't that just sound so lovely? So, <laughs> so I've actually decided to go with soft and airy. Like I said, I really do change it up for each video. All my videos have a really similar vibe, but for whatever reason, I switch up the colorings. Another thing that you can do with this is you can switch up the shadows, midtones, highlights, so similar to what you did in the color corrector. So I would make the shadows that kind of color. Midtones might be a light pink. Highlights would probably just be a white, and you can apply that to your image as well, if you want to. And the last thing that I would do is I always add a bit of film grain to my video. So film grain amount is about right at like 37% and film grain mix it. So this is how much film grain is actually applied to your video. I don't put it at the fullest strength, but I'll put it like maybe around, yeah, 21% looks pretty good to me. So as I was editing the end of this video, I realized I completely missed something out, which is making um, your color grade apply to your entire video. So usually your video will look something like this, like lots of little cuts. I mean, it depends. You might be a free talker and you can just do it all in one go, but I am not that person. So I want all of my clips, all of these warm clips to look like this with that pink light, nice kind of look. So all I would do is highlight that clip, click Control C, highlight all the other clips that I want the effect to apply to, and then I would go um, edit, paste attributes, and you can choose which effects you want to paste. So I'm just going to put all of the effects on, click paste, and we're good. So all of those color effects are now applied to all of the clips in my timeline. So that's the end of what I would do to my videos to make them look the way that they do. It's actually a pretty drastic change when I look at it from before and after. Um, learning how to color grade makes a massive difference. If you have the time, play around with your color grading, see what suits your videos best, see what suits your vibe best and work with it. I think that it can always be changed. If you look back at my old videos, my color grading is so weird and off, but it's all just, it's a learning process, isn't it? So I hope that this tutorial has helped you. Subscribe to my channel for videos every week on being authentic on YouTube, building an audience, everything like that. I appreciate you guys so much and I will see you soon.